Hello, welcome. Um, in this lecture series, I'm going to be talking to you about high school chemistry. Uh, my name is Aaron Small. Um, before we start, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. So, um, I'm 22 years old and I graduated from Brown University um, with a degree in chemistry. Um, and after I do this lecture series, series, I'm planning on returning to the United States, possibly to pursue a degree, a further degree in chemistry. Um, so, uh, today I'm going to be giving you an introduction to our book. Um, which I highly recommend that you follow along with. Um, it's called Introduction to Chemistry. It's the 13th edition. Um, in fact, it's an international student edition, and it's by Morris Hine and student, uh, Susan Arena. Um, and it can be found in, in any local bookstore. So um, it has many great problems that you can do, that you can practice, um, as well as um, great problem-solving strategies to follow along with. So I recommend that as we go through these lessons, you keep the book with you. And after each lesson, you try some problems in the back um, and make sure that the um, topics that we've talked about have, have really stuck and sunk in. Okay. Um, so what is chemistry? Um, everyone has an idea of what, of what it is, right? They, they conjure up images. A lot of them look like this. Um, sort of the mad scientist toiling away in his laboratory, exploding things, making Frankensteins, all this sort of stuff. Um, and there is an aspect of chemistry that is, you know, playing with chemicals, but that's probably not the best picture, right? Chemistry is really the study of everything. Um, you know, the compounds that make a tulip have its color, or sugar sweet, or iron rust, these are all chemical processes. Um, or explaining why carbon monoxide is poisonous is explaining how chemicals interact with the human body, right? Which is just another set of chemicals. Um, and so in order to do this, chemists think in, in a special way, right? They don't think, um, like you or I think when we see the world. Um, so, when it, uh, whereas you might see um, a large picture of a lake, right? You might see the, the blue water and the green trees and stuff like that. Um, and you know, you might consider it beautiful. A chemist looks at it from a different perspective. Um, a chemist looks at it from the microscopic perspective. So, a chemist looks at the intricate molecular details that make up that lake and he uses those details to explain why the lake is blue, right? Why the water flows, what, all, all the different properties of the lake, he can explain by looking at the microscopic structure. And so that's the difference. This broad view of the lake is called a macroscopic view, and the smaller view of the lake is called microscopic, okay? And um, scientists, right, um, now we have all this base of knowledge to sort of um, continue our study of chemistry, but the question is, how do they figure this stuff out in the first place? How do you know that this big blue lake is made up of these tiny particles, right? It's not an easy thing to do, and it's taken, you know, hundreds of years to arrive at this sort of knowledge. Um, but all of this knowledge has really come from one simple process that's been repeated over and over and over through the ages. So um, that process is called the scientific method. Um, and the scientific method is a tool that scientists use to make all important discoveries, okay? And what it really is, is it's a process of refinement, okay? It's a process of starting from one point, doing experiment, ending up at another point, and then repeating it over and over and over to constantly always get a better and better answer, okay? Um, and so where you start is by collecting facts or data, right? You look at the world around you. you you know, maybe you notice that the lake is blue and you ask yourself, why? Okay? Um, so you collect the data, right? All the lakes of the world seem to be blue. Um, so you formulate a hypothesis, right? Maybe you say that there's something in the water that makes the lake blue. Maybe it's a dye or something like that. Um, and so that's your hypothesis. You form an, a, an idea to explain your observation. Okay? Um, the third step is to do additional experiments.